It was announced yesterday, on February 20th, 1959, that the production of the CF-105 Avro Aero was to be cancelled. Joining us today is James C. Floyd, the Chief Engineer at AV Row. Today is a very sad day, as Canada has dismissed one of its greatest aeronautical achievements, and thousands of people have lost their jobs. Mr. Floyd, you have been involved in every aspect of the Aero project, from the initiation to the extensive design plans, and until just recently, when the Avro Aero took its maiden flight. When you watch this video, what goes through your mind? It was March 25th, 1958 in Walton, Ontario. I remember this day clearly, and always will, as it was the best representation of the work invested into the development of the CF-105 Avro Aero. The, it reminds me of the time when the project was first put into place, when the Soviet Union began producing a fleet of bombers capable of carrying nuclear weapons across the poles. To eliminate this threat, AV Row was given a budget of 600 planes at $2 million each. We were determined to get this plane into the skies, so we adopted the Cook Craig plan, which dismissed the prototype phase in order to get the new design into service quicker. Next thing you know, test pilot Yannis Zurichowski was out of control of the plane capable of flying near 2.5 Mach speeds at a maximum height of 50,000 feet. Mr. Floyd, you have provided us with a, with a greater knowledge on the background and effort devoted into the Aero project. Just 24 hours ago, it was made aware to the nation that the, produ that the production of the highly anticipated all-weather interceptor would be terminated. I now would like to open this pre press conference to any members of the media who have questions. Mr. Floyd, ever since Prime Minister John Dyfenbaker and his newly elected Conservative government cut down the production from 600 to 100 planes in 1957, the prospect of a superior Canadian Air Force in the skies began to diminish. What were the deciding factors that resulted in the complete termination of the Aero project? The decision was based on multiple different factors. The primary reason being the increasing unit cost of the plane, which was originally capped at $2 million, but eventually rose to $12.5 million. Furthermore, the need for an all-weather interceptor became redundant when the Soviet Union began producing intercontinental ballistic missiles, which had a minimum range of 5,500 kilometers. As a result, the initial threat of the Soviet M4 jet bomber and the destructive hydrogen bombs was disregarded. In a combination of these factors, we were forced to end a project yesterday. We are now in the midst of destroying all aircraft, engines, production tooling, and technical data, as there has been speculation of a Soviet spy who has infiltrated AV Europe. The decision to exterminate the Aero program has resulted in a loss of 14,528 Avro worker jobs and an additional 15,000 employees that work in the AV Road supply chain. Mr. Floyd, the retirement of the Aero program was a worst case scenario. What steps did the government take to try to prevent this unfortunate situation for the families affected? Well, the decision to cancel the Aero program was the worst possible option, and I would like to take this moment to express my sympathy for the families affected. I said, the rising unit cost of the plane was the dominant factor that was putting the Avro Aero at risk as we drained millions of taxpayers' dollars, and which was disapproved by the government. In October 1958, in an effort to reduce costs, Prime Minister John D. Baker eliminated the missile and fire control and even tried to sell the CF-105 to the U.S. However, they were not interested at the time, as they were focused on the promotion of the anti-aircraft bow market missiles at the time. The government tried its best, and it's very unfortunate that it had to end the way that it did. Mr. Floyd, as the Chief Engineer at AV Row, you had the pleasure to experience the design process of the Avro Aero firsthand. The impressive machine was a reflection of the greatest aspiration of Canadian aircraft design and will remain close to the hearts of many Canadian aviation fanatics. Please explain the principal design features and the potential that the Avro had, Avro Aero had on the world stage. The combination of different design features led to a plane that was faster and more advanced than the younger in its class. From the very start, we need the challenge to building an aircraft capable of flying at supersonic speeds, such as wave jet, due to the presence of shock waves. Our first solution to this was the implementation of triangular delta wings, which was very good. Also, this type of worm performed best at high speeds and increased the surface area, allowing for more fuel to be carried. The framework of the plane was primarily built of magnesium and key parts of titanium in order to withstand the severe heat experienced at high speeds. Bringing the CF-105 to these high speeds was a result of two around a PS-13 Tobra jets, each capable of producing 26,000 pounds of force. The final product was an airplane measuring 15.24 meters in wingspan with a length of 24.3 meters. The becoming Soviet's worst nightmare. The decision to cancel the air project will always be controversial, 
And unfortunately, we will never get to see its full potential. Thank you for your time.